Hello and welcome everyone to this class on instruments in medicine. My name is Dr. Janvi. I am the anesthesia educator on An Academy, and today we are going to be discussing some important instruments in medicine that can be asked in your exam. How do you identify it? What are the parts of it? What are the uses? All of those will be done today. So welcome to An Academy. It is India's largest learning platform. This is our Telegram channel where you can find all the links to our classes. So let's crack Need PG channel. We'll give you the links to all the classes available. Um, you can in, learn from India's top educators. You can compete in live tests and quizzes. You can access our question bank with 25,000 plus questions using a single plus subscription. We have a partnership with Prepladder called as the Iconic subscription which will help you get the video lectures of an academy and the live and the video lectures of prep ladder we also have a, a very nice features in our special classes in which you have polls you have raise a hand option you get lecture notes at the end in the form of a pdf our question bank has about 25000 plus high yield clinical questions which will help you solve any exam these are a neat pg toppers and these are a few of our batches which are going on right now so the clinical case discussions and instrument batch target NEET PG 2022 and 2023 batch. And if you would like to join the plus subscription, you can simply use my code Dr. Janvi Life and get a 10% off on your subscription value. So let's begin with our first instrument for today. It's the most important instrument in medicine. Can anyone identify this for me? What is this instrument? Yes, endotracheal tube. Okay. Now, it's not easy questions in the exam. Mein. And why I have not put options is because I'm going to ask you all difficult questions. Okay. So, I'm going to ask you the first question for today looking at this endotracheal tube. What is the material with which this endotracheal tube is made? That is the kind of question that they will ask you in the exam. Not a simple identify this. In fact, I think this was asked in the FMG exam very recently. They had asked to identify the instrument. Very good. So it is made up of polyvinyl chloride. Okay. Now, what is this black line that you can see over here? Can you see there is a bluish black line that is present on the lower part of the tube? What is this bluish black line and what is the use of this bluish black line? So they will mark it for you in the exam, then they will ask you. Any idea what is that bluish black line and what is its use? Quickly. Yes. Absolutely correct, Chef. So that is a radio opaque line. So whenever you check your presence of endotracheal tube on the X-ray, that line will exactly light up on the X-ray and it will show you the exact location of the endotracheal tube. Okay. The next question that they will ask you about is what kind of cuff is this? What is the type of cuff? Is it a high volume, low pressure cuff or is it a, a low volume, high pressure cuff? What kind of cuff is present in a normal endotracheal tube? Low what? High volume, low pressure or low volume, high pressure? What is high? What is low? No. All of you are wrong. So it is a high volume, low pressure cup. Okay. Remember, the pressure will always be low so that it does not affect the trachea. Okay. If this is your tube, the cuff pressure should not be very high. If the cuff pressure is too high, it will cause damage of the tracheal mucosa. Okay. So we always have a high volume, low pressure cuff in case of an endotracheal tube. Okay. All right. Next thing that they will ask you is, what is this mark over here? The transverse black line over here, what does it signify? Anyone, can you tell me what does this transverse back black line signify? Size, no. Everyone thought they will ask you simple questions, huh? No. Okay. Uh, while you are answering this, tell me what this transverse black... Yes, very good, Dr. AJ. So that is for correct position of the endotracheal tube. So it basically tells you the depth of insertion of endotracheal tube. So this black line that is there, if these are your vocal cords, whenever you put the tube inside, this black line should be present just at the level of the cords. Okay. So that will tell you the right depth of insertion of the endotracheal tube. Now, the most important question that they ask is, what is this hole? The end of the endotracheal tube is this. What is this extra hole that is given over here and what is its function? Yes, very high. 
very correct uh, sorry not very i very correct this is morphy's i can anyone tell me what is the function of the morphy's i function of the morphy's i alternate mode of ventilation very good so what happens if this end of the tube gets blocked because of any reason there may be mucus there may be a foreign body or tracheal wall this serves as an alternate source for ventilation okay so that small hole say small morphy's i say the air will continue to go out so this is the use of your morphy's i it is an alternate source of ventilation this question they ask every other exam okay now the question asked in fmg exam last year was uh endotracheal tube position is confirmed best by what test confirmation of endotracheal tube placement is confirmed by what test so i will give you guys four options and you can mark in the poll okay and these are your options a b c and d A is chest X-ray, B is ETCO2 or capnography, C is auscultation, D is inspection. I am just starting off the poll for you guys, so answer in the poll. All right. So most of you know the answer to this. The best way to confirm an endotracheal tube placement is by ETCO2 or by capnography. Okay. All right. So everything about the tube you know now. Let's move on to our next instrument. Can anyone identify this instrument for me and tell me the use of this instrument? Very simple instrument. Yes, very good, Seth. This is nothing but a face mask. Okay. All right. Now, is this face mask a universal face mask or it has different sizes? And everyone who is who has recognized this as a face mask, give me any two uses of the face mask. Yes, so this face mask comes in different sizes. So you have face mask size one, two, three, four, five, depending on whether you are ventilating a neonate or a child or a adult. Okay. Now, to what two, three things can you connect it? One is you can give it along with the ventilator. Okay. So you can connect it to the ventilator when you are giving bag and mask ventilation. Remember this, bag and mask ventilation. Okay. there is no significance of the yellow color phoenix it's only one of the braces to hold the mask together okay now the second thing is you can connect it to an ambu bag so if you are connecting it to an ambu bag what is the situation in which we will be using this face mask we will be using this in a cardiac arrest correct so when you are giving cpcr in a cardiac arrest we can connect it to an ambu and we can ventilate the patient okay now i will ask you a question what is the significance of this face mask ka material being transparent in nature is there any reason why this face mask material is transparent any specific reason for it yes absolutely correct so if there is any secretion or if the patient has any kind of vomiting okay so that will be seen through this transparent material because many a times you will just hold the mask onto the face of the patient imagine it is a black colored mask and you can't see anything and the patient vomits and you don't remove the mask what will happen along with the positive pressure ventilation you will push that vomitus back into his airway okay so that is aspiration so to prevent that you have a transparent colored mask okay or it any problem that the mask can cause any disadvantages of a mask can it cause any pressure related issues if you hold the mask too tightly it can cause break of the nasal septum okay all right next one identify this kind of tube this is one of the questions asked in ent in the fmg exams it is a it is not a normal endotracheal tube it has small small metallic wirings inside it has a metallic wirings inside and it can flex easily anyone know the name of this tube yes very good dr aj so this is an armored tube what is the other name of armored tube it is also called as a flexo metallic tube okay any idea when do we use this tube so this is the tube and it has sssss wirings inside okay so because of these metallic wires whenever you bend the tube or you kink the tube or you fold the tube the tube will not break okay the patent the 
um, what to say, lumen of the tube remains patent even if you fold it or kink it. So if you are using it for head and neck surgeries in which the surgeon has to move the neck a lot, then we prefer to use these armored tube, head, neck and neurosurgery. Okay. Prone position also we prefer to use armored tube. Any place where the tube can get kinked or it can get bent, we will prefer to use the flexometallic or armored tube. Okay. How will the cuff of this tube be? Anyone? Any idea how will the cuff of this tube be? Will it be high pressure, low volume, low pressure, high volume? How will it be? Okay. Remember for all the tubes, for all the tubes except red rubber tube. Red rubber tube is also called as the laser tube okay the laser tube or red rubber tube has a high pressure low volume cuff ulta okay other than that all other tubes that we have have low pressure high volume cuff okay all right identify quickly for me this is something very very easy you don't need time to identify this identify the type of laryngoscope for me and identify the size of this laryngoscope also Yes, absolutely correct. This is my curved blade or Macintosh laryngoscope. Okay. Now, this curved blade or odd Macintosh laryngoscope, may, this is the smallest size. This is size 1, size 2, size 3 and this is a size 4. Okay. All right. Now, if I attach a lever to this, if I attach a lever over here at the end of this curved blade, then what laryngoscope does it become? excellent then it becomes a mccoy laryngoscope okay so a lever in a curved blade laryngoscope makes it a mccoy laryngoscope okay identify this lma for me identify the type of lma for me yes so what is missing in this lma and also tell me whether this is first generation or second generation lma so can you see over here if i zoom in and show you guys this is the airway tube that is present in the LMA. This one, it is connected to the circuit. Okay. And this is the gastric tube over here in which we will put the Riles tube. Okay. So this has two ends. So those two ends means that this is a second generation LMA. Okay. Now what is absent in this LMA, which is usually present in all the LMAs? Anyone? Okay. Usually we will be having a pilot inflation line and a cuff balloon over here. So that is absent over here. Why? Because the cuff that is present in this IGEL LMA is made up of a thermoelastic material. Okay, it is made up of a thermoelastic material. So what happens with this thermoelastic material? Once you put the LMA inside, it will take the heat of this larynx and it will expand. So this is your LMA over here, your vocal cords, the LMA reaches here, takes the heat of the larynx and expands and forms a seal with the vocal cords. Okay. So that is why it does not require a cuff. All right. Moving on, quickly tell me LMA number one, LMA number two and LMA number three. Which are these LMAs? Just write one, two, three along with the names in the chat box. Full form of LMA is laryngeal mask airway. It is also called as supraglottic airway device. Okay. Okay. Number three is LMA Supreme. Superb. Very good. It is a disposable second generation LMA. Okay. Why second generation? Because it has two ends. Uh, airway end and a gastric end. And it is disposable. Okay. This LMA anyone? Double lumen. No, it is not double lumen. What is the first one that you can see over here? This is a Procyl LMA. Okay. Now, can anyone tell me Procyl LMA is found in which of the uh, the daycare in daycare surgeries, which is the most preferred type of LMA used? In daycare surgery, most preferred type of LMA used overall. It is LMA Procyl. Absolutely correct. LMA Procyl forms a very good seal with the vocal cords and it prevents from aspiration. So in daycare surgery, we prefer mostly to put a Procyl LMA. Okay. Anything special about this LMA? Number two, is it any different type of LMA? It's not fast track LMA. Okay. How many tubes does it have coming out of it? Anyone? 
okay so it has only one tube coming out of it correct so if it has only one tube coming out of it then this is a first generation lma and which is the only first generation lma that we know about the only first generation lma that we know about is lma classic okay so this is our lma classic clear everyone okay moving on to the next identification so identify this instrument that is used often in medicine it is connected one side to the circuit over here and it is connected one side to the endotracheal tube over here which is going into the patient this is the circuit and through the circuit it reaches the ventilator end yes very good this is the hme filter hme filter anyone give me the full form of hme filter full form of hme is heat and moisture exchanger okay can you tell me where does it take the heat and moisture from and where does it give it if you all don't know tell me i will tell you so we'll end up saving time okay so what happens when you expire air outside okay so imagine that i'm expiring air outside i'm breathing air outside so i will give out carbon dioxide and i will give out heat okay so in this hme filter heat will get trapped now from the circuit i am giving oxygen nitrous oxide co fluorine to maintain anesthesia in the patient when i'm giving these gases they are all dry and cold gases so they will go through this filter they will take this trapped heat and they will enter into the trachea and it will moisturize and warm the entire trachea okay so as a result of this what happens it moisturizes and warms the entire trachea so this is my use of the heat and moisture exchanger clear when i am breathing out i am giving out carbon dioxide heat and moisture out of that the heat and moisture is getting trapped over here and it is taken by the entire cold gases coming from the ventilator okay it's not same as a nebulizer not at all in fact okay all right what is this anyone can you identify it's not a t piece this will actually connect i'll tell you so i'll show you a little bit it is a corrugated tubing if you can see over here this will connect to an endotracheal tube over here and this part will connect to the circuit so it's something between the circuit and the endotracheal tube and your hme filter will be connected over here any idea what is this okay so this is an example of a catheter mount okay what does the catheter mount do this catheter mount this part the corrugated tubing part is basically very flexible so what it does is that whenever you are moving the tube around when you are moving the patient this flexible part will make sure that the connection between the endotracheal tube and the hme filter and circuit does not fall okay so it will move and it will bend along with the patient so the circuit connection will not get detached clear okay so this is the catheter mount used for the same identify this very good this is a central venous pressure line can you tell me how many lumens are there in this line what can i call it yes this is a triple lumen catheter absolutely correct this is a triple lumen catheter any idea what is the use of a triple lumen catheter okay first tell me what is the most common site for inserting a triple lumen catheter most common site in the right sided igv very good okay if i want to keep a long term central venous pressure line where would i prefer to keep it if it's a long term line should i keep it in the femoral igv or some other way very good way in the subclavian vein okay what is the most common and disastrous complication that is associated with insertion of this line pneumothorax excellent okay now if you look at this line you can see that it has three ends that is why it is called as the triple lumen line 
what is the ideal position of the tip of this line if i have placed the triple uh, triple human line what is the ideal position of the tip of the line in the right atrium are you sure look at where the tip is in this photo yes so the tip of this line is basically placed at this junction and what is this junction this junction is called as the right atrium and the svc junction okay so the tip of the line has to be present at the re and the svc junction clear okay now what is the best way to confirm the presence of the ijv line or the center venous pressure line in the ijv best way to confirm presence of the line in the right place okay in the chest x ray absolutely correct okay so stuffy has a very nice question why is this side preferred specifically why at the re svc junction for the tip of the central line now what happens if i insert the central line inside suppose i insert it extremely inside it will go through the tricuspid valve and into the right ventricle so because the tricuspid valve remains open because of the line all the time it can cause a valvular discordance okay second thing that suppose i put it and it lies in the right atrium the tip of the line lies in the right atrium so every time when the tip moves it can irritate the right atrial wall and that can show up as arrhythmias okay so to avoid that arrhythmias i have to put it just over there at the junction of the re and the svc okay all right now identify this monitor for me and tell me the use of this monitor yes absolutely correct this is my bis monitor what is the full form of bis full form of bis is bispectral index and what is it used for measuring it is used for measuring the depth of anesthesia monitoring correct so it will tell you whether your patient is well under anesthesia or not clear what is the ideal bis value the bis value is anywhere between 0 to 100 what is the ideal bis value to be maintained ideal bis value that has to be maintained is between 40 to 60 okay this means the patient is adequately deep under anesthesia all right now identify this instrument that is going into the heart see the position of the instrument and identify the instrument yes very good phoenix now can you tell me is this coming from any of the central veins the it is going into the subclavian vein over here okay and from here it, it is going into what is the vein on this side cephalic or basilic cephalic or basilic vein i have also forgotten which side is cephalic which side is basilic but i think basilic is correct okay so this is your catheter which is going into the basilic vein from there it is going into the subclavian vein from there it is going into the svc correct so this is basically coming from a peripheral vein into the heart so this is your peripherally inserted central catheter okay so you are inserting it peripherally in the basilic vein and then it is reaching centrally into the right atrium so this is also called as your pick line okay now can you tell me two three uses of the pick line anyone just like your central line it has similar uses like central line couple of uses of pick line anyone what can i give from this pick line i can give fluids i can give blood and blood products okay second thing is if i want to start vasopressor infusion it is directly going into the right atrium so i can give vasopressor infusion it will act very quickly from this pick line as compared to a peripheral line taken on the dorsum of the body okay all right next one identify this instrument and tell me its use it's not a right tube it's not a swan gans catheter it's not an esophageal temperature probe whoever answers it correctly gets a virtual chocolate from me 
it's not an esophagic tube but since it's looking similar it is something similar to it not arterial line catheter not urinary catheter something related to feeding only endoscopy tube no ashish you are quite close actually not an ng tube ng tube very good phoenix phoenix gets a virtual chocolate from my side phoenix and dr kamal absolutely correct ng tube is nasogastric tube okay that is going up to the stomach so that is your trials tube what is nj tube nj tube is going up to your jejunum okay so this is your nasogejunal tube okay now just tell me how will you identify this first of all it's always white in color okay so this part can you see it's always white in color and this it has a flexible wire or a stilet inside it why because by the time it reaches the jejunum it tends to coil a lot so to prevent the coiling before it reaches the jejunum we put the stilet in it once it reaches the jejunum we will remove the stilet outside okay now the naso jejunal naso gastric tube can you tell me what is the use of the naso gastric tube it's going into the stomach so what are the two things that the tube can do in the stomach the naso jejunal tube what are the two things that naso jejunal tube can do in the stomach okay very good one is it can suction out or aspirate any of the gastric contents what is the second thing it can do gastric ph monitoring no simple you can feed the patient correct there are two things that can be done using a naso gastric tube what can not be done using a naso jejunal tube out of these two things out of suctioning and feeding what is the one thing that cannot be done by the naso jejunal tube yes you cannot suction out of the naso jejunal tube okay nothing will come out because it does not have any storage capacity it just absorbs everything the stomach is like a bag which is storing all the food in it so you can suction out the food but the jejunum is not a bag it will just absorb the nutrients and allow the food to pass further on so you cannot suction with the naso jejunal tube you can only feed the patient okay so if you have long term feeding of the patient maybe if the patient has a gastrectomy done for ca stomach so you can put a naso jejunal tube across the remnant of the stomach and you can feed the patient for how many ever uh, days like maybe 2 weeks or 3 weeks okay if i have to feed the patient for more than 1 month then what is the tube that is used can he go with the tube in his nose can he go home with the tube in his nose will he allow that or will you want to give something else for him rice tube no very good phoenix so in that case we will give a peg tube okay what is the full form of peg सबको पता है पेग क्या है पेग ट्यूब में बेसिकली यू आर ओपनिंग अप अ वेरी स्मॉल होल इन द एबडोम एंड देन पुटिंग अ ट्यूब राइट इन टू द स्टमक सो यू फीड फ्रॉम द एबडोमिनल पार्ट ऑफ द ट्यूब एंड इट गोज डायरेक्टली इन टू द स्टमक ओके सो इट इज अ परक्यूटेनियस गैस्ट्रिक ट्यूब पेग ट्यूब इज नथिंग बट परक्यूटेनियस गैस्ट्रिक ट्यूब ओके all right next one identify this quickly and tell me the question that was asked in the neat pg exam this year so they had asked where do you collect csf from in lumbar puncture what is the exact place where you collect csf from in lumbar puncture okay first of all identify for me are these lumbar puncture needles or are these spinal needles spinal needle or lumbar puncture needle spinal needle is used for giving spinal anesthesia lumbar puncture needle is used for only collection of csf for diagnostic and therapeutic purposes yes very good these both are lumbar puncture needles okay now you always say ma'am what is the difference actually both of them are quinkies needle only okay so the only difference is the size the gauge okay no not the flange the flange is the difference between epidural needle and spinal needle the size or the gauge is the difference between spinal needle and lumbar puncture needle in lumbar puncture needle you want to collect csf so you will put a very thick needle a low gauge needle 
a 20 gauge or a 22 gauge needle so that the CSF comes out quickly. Per, 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 you can collect it and then you can send it for diagnosis. Okay. But in case of a spinal needle, I don't have a picture of it over here. Okay. In a spinal needle, you will have very thin. So you will use either a 25 gauge, which will be orange in color or a 27 gauge, which will be pink in color. Okay. Mostly they will give you this 25 gauge one only. So that is used for giving your spinal anesthesia. Yes, Dr. AJ, so you identified from the colors only. This yellow and black, just remember taxi wala needles, yellow and black needles, they are used for doing a lumbar puncture. So you can imagine there is a taxi, black and yellow taxi, and uske wheel mein there is a puncture. Okay, so there is a lumbar puncture in the taxi. Okay. So that is how you can remember yellow and black are used for lumbar puncture and your 25 and 27 gauge orange and pink are used for giving spinal anesthesia. In spinal anesthesia, you don't need to collect the CSF. In fact, you want a very small hole and then as soon as the CSF comes, you give the drug, the bup vacant drug into the spinal space. Okay. All right. What is the spinal space or what is the space where you will get CSF for from in both Lumbar puncture as well as in spinal anesthesia. Where is the place from where you will get CSF? Yes, absolutely correct. It is in the subarachnoid space. Okay. And to reach the subarachnoid space, what is the last piece, structure that you will pierce? To reach the subarachnoid space, what is the last structure that you will pierce? Dura. No. This is the subarachnoid space, correct? So it is below what? It is below the arachnoid meter. Absolutely correct. So what will be the last structure to pierce? The last structure to pierce will be the arachnoid meter. Clear? Okay. All right. Now moving on to the next picture. Identify this instrument. Identify the use of the instrument. This is not epidural needle guys. This is a bone marrow biopsy needle. Absolutely correct. This is a bone marrow. Can you tell me whether this is a bone marrow aspiration or a bone marrow biopsy needle? Okay. This is a bone marrow biopsy needle. Okay. How to remember whether this is a bone marrow biopsy or aspiration needle? This is Jamshedi's bone marrow biopsy needle. How to remember this? Okay. Now your bone marrow aspiration needle, I don't have a picture over here, but it's something like this. And then it has a small screw over here. Okay. Now in your bone marrow aspiration, you simply have to put the needle inside the bone marrow. The bone is the iliac crest where you put it. Okay. Just at the level of the hip. You put this needle inside and you aspirate the blood out. It is as simple as that. But for your biopsy, you need something to hold on to and push the needle into the bone. And then you take a piece of the bone chuck, and you remove it out. Okay. So to hold and to push the needle, you require presence of flange. Okay. You need this flange. So this flange will help you get a grip and push the needle right into the bone and then you can pick out a biopsy okay so this is the difference between your bone marrow aspiration and bone marrow biopsy needle so understood how to identify bone marrow aspiration and bone marrow biopsy needle okay all right okay phoenix i'll tell you again when you want to take a bone marrow aspiration you simply put the needle in the bone attach a syringe and aspirate okay so if you aspirate you will collect the blood but when you want to take the biopsy you need to hold the needle you need to push it right into the bone and then pull it out so that you get a chip of the bone okay so to push it right into the bone you need something to lever onto something to hold onto in the needle so that is where your flange will help you this flange of the needle okay so this flange of the needle is used for bone marrow biopsy clear Okay, now identify this needle. 
this looks a lot like a bone marrow biopsy really but it's not look at it it's so thin it has alternate light and dark markings and it has flange what are we talking about over here yes very good now another trick your bone marrow biopsy and aspiration needles are all made up of steel because they are going into a very uh, tight uh, or a very strong bone that is your iliac crest okay here you have your epidural needle this is a very chotu sa delicate sa needle as compared to the bone marrow aspiration and biopsy needle how do you identify the epidural needle from the spinal needle what is the dif the differentiating thing in both of them epidural and spinal needle good so presence of these wings or the flange is important okay so whenever you have a flange or you have these wings that means it is a epidural needle and there are also alternate light and dark markings in this case okay so there are alternate light and dark markings clear okay moving on to our next instrument identify this instrument for me very good everyone knows this is foley's catheter what is the material of the foley's catheter material of the foley's catheter can be asked in your exam no silicon no silicon catheter is different remember yes it is made up of rubber okay it is made up of rubber okay now in the foley's catheter quickly identify for me what is one and what is the location of one very good so one is the balloon which helps in securing the catheter what is the location of the balloon it is in the urinary bladder okay all right the next thing that you will find if you do a usg of the uh, ultrasound of the urinary bladder you will find the inflated balloon in the urinary bladder okay now tell me out of 2 and 3 if i want to connect a uro bag where should i connect it in 2 or in 3 Two or in three. This will tell me how many of you all have put Foley's bag, Foley's catheter. Sorry. Yes, absolutely correct. It has to be connected here. Okay, my Euro bag has to be connected in three. What is two? Can you see two has a very narrow opening over here? In two, you will do nothing but you, this is your inflation port. Okay. So to inflate this balloon over here, you will use the port at two to put some saline in it. Okay, absolutely correct. Okay, what is this bag? Euro bag. I think this is damn easy because it's written over here. Okay, now just to confuse you guys, let me ask you. I know, लिखा हुआ है. दो मिनट ओके इन दोनों में मुझे बताओ आई एम मार्किंग वन एंड आई एम मार्किंग टू टेल मी विच वन इज द यूरो बैग इन दिस इसमें नहीं लिखा हुआ है वन और टू यस वेरी गुड सो वन इज द यूरो बैग ओवर यूर हाउ डिड यू आइडेंटिफाई ओवर यूर वन इज यूरो बैग how did you identify one is euro bag i'll tell you in this the tubing that is there okay this upar ka jo tubing that is there it is ending over here right at the beginning of the bag the second thing is you have these transverse lines which is telling you how much urine is connected collected 10 ml 50 ml 100 ml 200 ml okay what is this bag over here you are seeing the tubing of this bag is going right down idhar niche tak ja raha hai and it says water seal drainage system so what is this bag this is nothing but a intercostal drain bag okay this is used for collecting any kind of pleural fluid pleural effusion pleural uh, abscess anything that is there in the pleura okay so this is your intercostal drain bag with an underwater seal okay 
understood and it doesn't have those oblique markings that were there over here in the euro bank so this is the uh, trick question that they ask in the exam they try to confuse between these two different kinds of banks so you guys will not make a mistake now euro bank ka just see the tip is ending over here if you are not able to see the tip just see these oblique markings and you will be able to identify for your exam another thing that comes in the euro bank sometimes now the newer type of euro bank they have a chamber over here okay as a chamber hota hai in which the urine is collected it is measured and then you can empty the chamber behind into the bag okay so that is another way of identifying the bag okay now quickly tell me what is this instrument and what is the use of the instrument true cut biopsy needle very good and what biopsy do i take with the true cut biopsy needle give me two organs where i take biopsy with the true cut biopsy needle breast very good and one more you can see it has these alternate light and dark markings i just push it from here tuck and it will go inside and take a biopsy of the tissue okay other than breast one more organ maybe in the males where you can take stomach no very good phoenix so you can take it in the prostate okay so you can take breast and prostate biopsy with this all right okay identify this instrument tell me its use okay i'll give you one hint this is inserted by the seldinger's technique it is inserted by the seldinger's technique fnc no not epidural <laughs> flange dekh ke sab epidural bol rahe ho okay what is seldinger's technique anyone all right so this is your arterial cannula okay now whenever you want to check the invasive blood pressure monitoring of the patient can you tell me which is the artery that we prefer to check prefer to cannulate for invasive bp monitoring radial artery very good so what do you do in the radial artery first you puncture the radial artery with this needle okay once you puncture the radial artery you will insert this guide wire inside okay once the guide wire is inside just remove the needle and on top of this part the cannula okay so by keeping the guide wire inside and then passing the cannula over it that is called as the seldinger's technique okay so this is your arterial cannula used for invasive blood pressure monitoring any uh, example of invasive blood pressure monitoring in which cases will you do invasive blood pressure monitoring do you need the beat to beat bp in every patient or in any specific patients okay so if your patient has massive blood loss expected you want to give high amount of fluids if the patient has any cardiac uh, problems like recent mi in that case you will do an arterial or invasive blood pressure monitoring okay all right identify this and give me two uses of this giddles airway giddles what airway where do you put this giddles oropharyngeal airway correct this is giddles oropharyngeal airway good now can you tell me giddles oropharyngeal airway two uses one is patency of the airway it maintains in maintains the patency of the airway by pushing the tongue forward okay and second thing is it can also be used as a suppose someone is having a seizure can you use giddles airway for anything you can use it as a bite block okay so as a bite block it will prevent tongue bite okay identify this now we all know this because you have seen the other brother of this yes this is your riles tube or this is also called as your nasogastric tube okay you all should know the sizes of the riles tube or the nasogastric tube i have not added it over here but you have it of different sizes 10 12 14 and there are different colors of the riles tube also which will indicate those different sizes okay all right what is the use of the riles tube 
it is used for doing two things it is used for feeding the patients and it is also used for aspiration of gastric contents correct what is the best method of confirming the position of the rice tube this one yes i think it is 14 gauge the orange one is 16 gauge i think yes to confirm the position of the rice tube the best method is by x ray so this um, greenish thing that you see is the radio opaque tip of the rice tube and this will be lying in the stomach okay all right what is this tube looks very similar to the rice tube but it is not in fact it does not have any function similar to the rice tube it is not nasojejunal tube not nasogastric tube and it has these small small walking walk markings any idea e yes absolutely correct this is your infant feeding tube okay it has these micro markings can you see this is your infant feeding tube now your infant feeding tube is used in infants obviously for feeding because in infants you have it has a very small length okay so infants may you require a smaller length as compared to this so it has a small length and the second thing is you can also use it for suctioning all right identify this give me its use it's not iv set it is a suction catheter but what is it used for suctioning it is a very specific suction catheter you put your thumb over here and when you press the thumb whatever is around will get suctioned out from the suction catheter okay so this is a intra tracheal suction catheter okay so this type of suction catheter from this end you connect it to the suction machine okay and this end with the holes in it you will put inside the endotracheal tube so you put it right inside the endotracheal tube and you suction out whatever is blocking the endotracheal tube so that is why it is you can from the endotracheal tube you can even go down into the trachea so if your endotracheal tube is ending over here your suction catheter through the endotracheal tube can go down into the trachea and suction out whatever is there inside the trachea so that is why it is your intra tracheal suction catheter clear okay all right now along with the intra tracheal suction catheter we use this instrument any idea what is this instrument any idea what is this okay this is called as the suction trap okay this is the suction trap so whatever you suck out this part you will connect it to the end of the suction catheter whatever you suck out it will get connected in this trap and then you can send it for culture okay so if you want to send the tracheal sample for culture you can send it by collecting it in this suction trap it is also called as the mucus trap okay clear all right next one identify this set give me its use iv set are you sure it is an intravenous set very good dr kamal so this is a blood transfusion set okay can anyone tell me the name of this chamber that is present over here this chamber where you see the drops coming what is the name of this chamber M से स्टार्ट होता है ओके सो दिस इज कॉल्ड एज मोफीज चेंबर ओके सो वॉट इज द यूज हाउ विल यू आइडेंटिफाई द ब्लड ट्रांसफ्यूजन सेट इट हैज अ फिल्टर इन द मोफीज चेंबर आई यू गाइज एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड और नो guys are you able to understand yeah i thought you, it got stuck over there that's why i got scared okay whenever there is a filter in the morphis chamber that means this set is used for transfusing 
blood so whatever are the clots they micro thrombi they will get filtered out by this filter okay and this one over here this one is not your this is your normal iv set correct there is no filter present in this so this is the normal iv set okay what is this any idea what is this okay this one is your intercostal drain this one is intercostal drain okay so again can you see over here there are these openings so where will these openings lie if this is your lung this is the pleura along the lung so this will go here and the openings will lie somewhere over here inside the pleural cavity okay and this part is connected to the icd bank so this is nothing but your intercostal drain used for draining any kind of plural collections okay all right identify this yes this is your icd bag we already saw it before this is your intercostal drain bag with an underwater seal so at this end this intercostal drain bag is connected over here okay identify quickly yes this is my portex tracheostomy tube guys do you like to have classes like this with just images and you have to identify or do you like with options do you all want options or do you want to do without options okay so this is your portex tracheostomy tube okay so portex tracheostomy tube is a disposable type of tracheostomy tube okay everyone wants options or right. everyone wants options in life portex tracheostomy tube is a disposable type of tracheostomy tube this flange it will lie somewhere at the neck this part will go into the trachea okay and this has a balloon over here which helps in maintaining the position in the trachea again okay. anyone can you tell me what is this thing over here this guide which helps in inserting the tracheostomy tube it's over here also in purple color it is called as a obturator okay it helps in guiding the placement of the tracheostomy tube all right now quickly identify i will just mark it tell me as soon as i mark the size of the cannula okay so what is the size of pink cannula 20 gauge very good what is the size of orange cannula already there oh shit it's written over here okay <laughs> sorry i'm not supposed to say shit sorry 14 gauge uh, the gray one will be 16 gauge green one will be 18 gauge pink one will be 20 gauge blue is 22 gauge and yellow is 24 gauge okay if i put a purple one what will that be purple one is how many gauge 26 gauge very good pediatrics may which ones do we use pediatrics may we use yellow 24 gauge and purple 26 gauge okay all right identify this tell me its use batao fatafat yes this is a direct ophthalmoscope absolutely correct what do i identify with a direct ophthalmoscope one of the most common diagnosis that i try to make with a direct ophthalmoscope routinely in emergencies especially in obstetrics i will check for papilledema okay any kind of papilledema if there is papilledema it will give me an idea of whether there is raised icp or not okay all right identify this quickly for me and tell me the name of this valve over here ambu bag what is the full form of ambu full form of ambu ambulatory mechanical breathing unit 
correct okay tell me over here what is the name of this valve present over here there's a fish mouth valve present over here what is the name of that valve it is called as the lardels valve okay lardels valve okay now important question out of these two i'm marking one and two where will i connect oxygen out of one and two in one or in two where will i connect oxygen yes absolutely correct oxygen is connected in two chote wale mein okay what is connected in the big thing then over here in the big hole what will i connect i will connect the reservoir back absolutely correct awesome okay identify one two and three for me they are all used for the same thing they are all used for draining urine absolutely correct which is the foley's catheter one two or three yes two is your rubber foley's catheter okay what is one and what is three very good stuffy so three is your silicon catheter silicon catheter is used when you want to keep the pa patient catheterized for more than 7 days okay so for long term catheterization we prefer the silicon catheter any idea what is one if you are not able to catheterize a patient you can use one any idea <clears throat> okay this is your condom catheter okay so if you are unable to put the catheter in the urethra you just put it on top of the penis from here like a condom and then connect this part to a uro bag okay so this is your condom catheter all right okay last question for today identify this set and what is the purpose or what is the use and one more this set also identify this set and the next set this is your epidural set very good so it basically has the epidural needle called as the two he needle then here what do we have we have the loss of resistance syringe okay and here we have the epidural catheter and this is the filter okay what is this set if that was the epidural set here you have the lumbar puncture needle here you have a catheter and you have a bag and you have a chamber over here any idea what is this this is a little difficult to identify but whoever identifies gets a virtual chocolate from me pediatric chamber no this is not for pediatric fluid but that is a good guess sir i'm telling you over here there is a lumbar puncture needle with a catheter and a bag okay this is your lumbar drain okay this is called as lumbar drain so what happens with the lumbar drain you put the needle inside the lumbar puncture needle get the csf once the csf comes thread this catheter on top of it and keep it in the subarachnoid space so the csf will continuously flow in this chamber and from the chamber into the bag okay so whenever a patient has raised icp if you want to drain his csf so you can use it so you use this lumbar drain for draining the csf of the patient okay so did you get guys understand this all right so i hope that this class was useful for all of you guys i would love to take many more such classes tomorrow also 8 pm and 10 pm we will be having many such classes so you guys can keep updated about all these classes on telegram and cns class i will take next month okay mostly tomorrow will be respiratory system all right so thank you so much for joining me today guys and i shall see you next time till then keep studying cardiology class already taken today in the evening if anyone has missed out don't forget to watch it okay thank you bye bye this ppt has some instruments from surgery also ahead okay your linear stapler bard parker handle needle and all that 
so if you guys want you all can attempt those if you don't get something you can ask me okay all right bye good night